Greetings, my name is Tamujit Sandra and I am a second year PhD student in the Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur in the Biological Sciences and Bioengineering Department under the guidance of Dr. Santosh Kumar Mishra. So this lecture series will be a part of the teaching requirements for fulfilling my uh, Prime Minister Research Fellowship criteria and so in this session or in this lecture we will be looking at different biomaterials so this course will con will cover different topics on advanced biomaterials but so in this introductory session or class we'll be talking about biomaterials in general their properties their uh, examples their classifications and the important considerations which we one needs to keep in mind while uh, choosing any biometric biomaterial based device for a particular application so let's get started it so, when we say what is a biomaterial, a biomaterial is basically a substance or any material which is intended to interact with biological systems. So, biomaterial is any substance which is in engineered to interact with a biological system for diagnosis and for therapy. Now, these biomaterials can be used either individually or in combination with other such materials or systems. So there basically if we want to summarize just a biomaterial is any material which is intended for uses in direct combination with biological systems. So such biomaterials can be divided into four main classes. The first class is metals. Now the metals are the sum of uh, are the examples which are one of the most primitively used uh, material for direct in use with a human body. For example, the most uh, prime example is the dental implants. So now, uh, initially when people used to lose their teeth, they used to uh, resubstitute it with gold or silver implants. So that was the first time when metals were used in a human body to serve a particular function or and give an aesthetic value. But now, uh, with the development of science, these metals find their applications in different fields of uh, biomedia, biomedical engineering and uh, tissue engineering as well. So now when hip arthroplasties or shoulder arthroplasties or replacements surgeries are done with bone tissues, so metals are mainly used as plates, as uh, you know, as stents. So, metals find their uh, application in different fields in biomedical engineering because of their uh, inert nature and also their uh, malleability, ductility and you know their fabrication into different shapes as suited. So for different uh, joint replacement surgeries, initially metals were the uh, most important choice for any scientist. So metals can either be used individually or in order to improve their properties, they can be used as alloys. So alloy is uh, amalgamation of uh, more one or more than one metals to improve their physical properties. So there are specific alloys such as nitinol, uh, which is mainly used in uh, making manufacturing stents for uh, valve prosthesis uh, and also for uh, making uh, stents for correcting atherosclerotic artery diseases. Also, there are titanium, uh, aluminium, vanadium alloy, stainless steel, uh, you know, and many uh, such examples are there which find their applications in different fields of uh, tissue engineering and biomedical uh, engineering. The second class is the glasses. The glasses are the silica based compounds, so their main role is in the ocular uh, replacements or in the correcting of different ocular diseases, so making lenses, implanting. So these were usually done with glasses. The third category is an important criteria of a biomedical uh, a biomaterial, which are ceramics. Now these ceramics have properties which are different from that of metals. So ceramics uh, examples include hydroxyapatite, which is a calcium-based ceramics, alumina, aluminium oxide, uh, zirconia. All these are ceramics. Now their ceramics are also finding their roles in different arthroplasties and. Uh, in uh, different uh, bone uh, in tissue engineering uh, approaches and uh, joint replacements because 
ceramic show and individual unique property of much greater uh, better hardness uh, surface properties uh, and also much uh, lesser wear and tear when used in uh, multiple cycles so ceramics are also finding applications in different fields of tissue engineering and biomedical engineering as well and finally one of the most important classes of biomaterials which are coming into light uh, are or have been used for quite some time now since are the polymers now these polymers are a class of materials which have very unique properties so polymers are basically repeating units of a particular material or an analyte uh, of, a, of, of a material uh, which can be natural or synthetic natural polymers examples include collagen uh, starch cellulose chitosan uh, and many others the all the protein based uh, uh, polymers are the natural types of polymers such as silk fibroin all these polymers are natural and uh, the various types of synthetic polymers include the uh, polyvinyl alcohols the the poly and isopropyl acrylamide and the acrylic acid based uh, polymers and many such polymers exist now with using polymers in complete in combination with each other it is possible to fabricate different types of composite polymeric systems with uh, different properties which can be tailored to suit a particular requirement in tissue engineering uh, approaches so after looking at uh, these examples so now if we try to make a working definition of what a biomaterial is so it would uh, summarize as a material which is intended to interfere with by interface with biological systems to evaluate treat augment or replace any tissue organ or function of the body so after this uh, where are what are the different fields in which these biomedicals can find their applications so uh, these biomedical uh, biomaterials can be used for fabricating different uh, devices uh, or different uh, com com composite materials for their roles in hip uh, joint replacements such as the shoulder joint the hip joint replacement surgeries the arthroplasties uh, bone uh, tendon and ligament repairs dental implants and dental fixatures uh, then the hard valve prosthesis the valve uh, the vessel uh, prosthesis uh, as well so different skin repair templates which we will be looking at in great uh, detail when in the upcoming lectures so there are many such examples where these biomedical Uh, biomaterials can be used to fabricate so if we discuss one particular example such as uh, a skin repair uh, device so this would essentially uh, imply uh, a system which can actually you know uh, consist of two composite polymers or uh, now they can be natural such as colla type 1 collagen and a chondroitin 6 sulfate to provide the two layers for the dermis and epidermis repair and they can also be fabricated in form of a scaffold which is a three dimensional uh, mesh like network structure a cross link structure with which has pores for migrating uh, migration of different cells when they can be seeded with it so basically what it is done is after fabricating that scaffold they are seeded with cells these cells are mainly the fibroblasts so after seeding with the cells they are taken and implanted into an area with a large skin damage such as a third degree burn where a patient loses a lot of the dermal tissue and the normal healing process of such tissues are very difficult so in such cases uh, these uh, scaffolds which are composed or which are uh, fabricated using this desirable biomaterials are very advantageous and have provided a new direction in tissue engineering for the healing of Uh, many such uh, conditions which are would have been otherwise uh, very uh, fatal to the patients or would, which would have uh, had a very low survival uh, or survivability rate among other medical uh, interventions so with this we just finish the applications of biomedical devices and in the upcoming lectures we will be looking at the most important uh, factors or the criteria for the choice of a biomaterial of a biomaterial for a particular application so for today that will be it thank you